Hello friends! Um, I wanted to get on here and do this video and I'm sitting in my bedroom in my unmade bed. I'm glad you can't see it. Um, and anyway, so, and I feel like I'm at the most horrendous angle, but I literally have my phone propped up on a pillow. Mm, it is what it is. I probably should have went to the kitchen table where I've done my last one million videos. Anyway, I wanted to get on here and talk to you about, see, I'm not even, that's going to draw me nuts. Sorry, guys. Anyway, it is what it is. I wanted to get on here and talk to you guys about um, having a child that's nonverbal. Um, and um, unless you do, I think it's really hard to relate to and it's really hard to understand. And um, there are things that will forever bother me about it. Um, I don't, I love Connor the way he is. I don't mind. Um, I'm not one of these people who, um, this is going to sound bad. I hope nobody takes this wrong. But I'm not one of these people that prays every single day. God, please let him talk. God, please let him talk. Um, I pray for his development. I pray for his growth. Um, and I pray that God will make him um, the man that he wants him to be. No matter what that looks like. And no matter how hard that is. Or no matter what that makes the future look like. And so I'm a little bit not on the norm. I know. Because I don't sit all the time and think about it really but there are days that it will hit you and um recently last night we went out for connor's birthday and he does this in restaurants a lot he eats he's fine everything's completely fine and then he reaches for me and if he ever reaches for me during a meal a couple things can happen first off i can make him stay in his seat which I've done before because I want him to learn that, you know, you don't get picked up and held during a meal. You know, I mean, eventually we're going to have to get to that point. Um, you don't decide you're done and we leave. Because if we did that, every time he was done, he would pitch a fit to leave. And, or I can hold him. Which it's extremely hard to eat. He's seven years old. You know, um, and so... Sometimes, though, you have to pick your battles, and you have to decide what's best, and um, it depends on, uh, to be honest, it depends on where you are, how crowded it is, and kind of what mood you're in. You know, if it's one of those days where it's like, this is the last straw, I'm about to have a nervous breakdown, then you just hold them. I mean, and eat around them. Try your best. So, last night was one of them nights. Um... And he reached for me, and I first told him no, and he's, like, clawing, like, trying to get to me. He doesn't do it in a mean way. He doesn't mean to hurt you, but it hurts. He, he's not a tiny baby. It hurts. Um, and I told him no a couple times, and then he got the pouty lip, and I knew it was about to be a big ordeal. So I just reached for him and put him in my lap. He laid with his head up here, you know, facing backwards or whatever laid on me. And I just held him and I just ate around him. And was it difficult? Yes. Do I always do that? No. Um, but it was one of those nights where I picked my battles. And you have to learn how to do that. And been parenting, period, you know, you have to decide. And so it was just one of those times where I knew how to pick my battles. He does this a lot when we go out to eat. It can be a number of things. Sometimes he's cold. I keep a jacket in his um, diaper bag that I carry everywhere with me. And the reason, which it looks just like a backpack because he doesn't care. But I don't want him to be seven and it be abundantly obvious that I'm carrying a diaper bag. Even though you still know when I'm carrying a bag. But anyway, um, he... So sometimes I can, I realize he's cold and I can get the coat out and put the coat on him and he'll get back in his seat and eat and everything's fine. It's all good. And that's why I keep a coat with me. And that goes back to him being nonverbal. He cannot tell me, hey mom, I'm cold. And he just cries and cries. And I kind of have to figure out and decipher. That's my job as a mother. And it's a difficult job sometimes. It's hard to figure out and decipher. So last night I knew he wasn't cold because normally if he's cold, when he gets on me, he bundles up like this and folds himself up under so that he's like, so that he, this would be all against me, you know? And so I knew he wasn't cold. I wasn't really sure. Um, I think when he does that, um, that possibly his belly starts hurting because if you know Connor personally, you know how he eats. 
um, and he has a lot of stomach issues and a lot of problems. Um, and so I think that um, that might be part of it. I'm not 100% sure on that. I don't know. Um, and so um, it happens a lot. And it's one of those things where I just wish he could tell me my belly hurts, you know. And, and I have to guess a lot of times. And I'll give him Pepto a lot of times when I think it's his belly. And he could have a headache. Like, I, I don't know. And the way he expresses it, because he's on verbal, is he just cries and he cries and he cries. Now, could he point to what hurts? Yes. Do I ask him to point to what hurts? Every single time. Because I'm hoping at some point he'll do it. You know, like it'll click with him and he'll start doing it. Has he done it yet? No. Um, and so it's a lot of guessing and it's hard. It's difficult. And he feels frustrated and overwhelmed and he's hurting somewhere. He can't tell me what's wrong. It's just really hard. Um, I remember one night, um, we ended up taking him to children's ER. He just was bawling and bawling and bawling. And it was abundantly clear that something was wrong. And so I'm like, forget it. We just went to children's ER. And we get there, and he's just laying on me. He's crying, um, and we're finally seen, and he had an ear infection. He had not touched his ears. He had not tugged at his ears. Nothing to indicate an ear infection, and so you never know. You truly never know, and a lot of times we'll go ahead and we'll go to children's ER because if he's hurting, um, and half the time it turns out to be pneumonia because he gets pneumonia a lot because he has scarring in his lung and so he's more susceptible to pneumonia and they will send us to children's so rather than pay an ambulance bill because we have a ton um, we go ahead and go to children's so that's why we do that and plus all his doctors and specialists are there and so it's just easier so a lot of times we'll just go to children's ER if it's after hours and I can't get into his doctor so I just want to throw that in um, and so Anyway, it's just extremely difficult, and some days it weighs on you. You know, when I hear parents tell children way younger than Connor, use your words, it shouldn't bother me because if Connor wasn't nonverbal, I'm sure there's times I would tell him to use his words, so I totally get it, but it makes me cringe a little. Like, it just, it's hard. There are little things that are hard about it, and that's okay to admit. That's okay to say. It doesn't mean I love him less. It doesn't mean I think less of him. I think we live in a world nowadays where we're afraid to admit how we feel um, because of judgment and because of, well, it'll be taken wrong. Well, it'll be. And so a lot of times a special need moms don't express how we feel. And I think that new special need moms think that there's something wrong with the way they feel so then they don't share it and then it just breeds on to this whole generation that thinks something's wrong with them but yet we're feeling the same way i guarantee you there's other moms out there that feel this way some days it's great some days it's fine i don't think about it it doesn't bother me and some days it's all i think about and it bothers me and i think about a world where he could tell me about his day where when he's sick he could tell me what hurts, where he, you know, um, just where things would be easier and it wouldn't be so hard. And I would be lying if I told you I never thought about that. Um, it's just a, it's a different kind of normal. And I think because I don't have other children, it doesn't bother me as much. But there are days that it still bothers me. And that's going to be for the rest of his life. That's going to be forever. It's not going to go away at any point. And when therapists tell me, um, I think it's right around the corner. I think I think you're going to hit a breakthrough. And I believe them. Um, I do believe them. But I don't at the same time. <laughs> I know that sounds awful. I know that they believe it. And, and it's not that I don't believe in him. But um, I'm trying to say it nicely. Because I don't want anybody to think that I'm saying anything bad about anyone. Um, I've heard it before. Um, I've heard it for years. I've heard that. 
in just a few months. It's right around the corner. Oh, when he gets tubes in his ears. Oh, when he gets his tonsils out. Oh, when he, you know, and no. No. Um, new words will come. And then they go away. Sorry, guys. And just for an example is... Um, Connor said, Daddy. I think it's been like two years ago. And Connor adores his daddy. Um, so I know that's a word that he would he would use. And he said it twice, I think. Um, it's been two years. Um, not even the D sound. Like, it's... And you don't want to think it's regression. You want to tell yourself it's not regression. He's not regressing. Um, but your mind slips there sometimes. And you wonder why. Why? If he's nonverbal, it's fine. But why do we get these little teasers? Why do we get these times where new words are just like flowing out of him and then nothing like I remember the first time he combined words which is a big deal and he said um bye mama and it was just crazy and I and I it gave me that glimmer of hope and it made me think oh what everybody's saying is true it's just around the corner if he can put two words together he's going to start putting more and more words together and they're right it's just around the corner and it's not um he did say hi mom um a couple weekends ago but i mean he it's it's not consistent at all and i didn't mean for this to be a vent session but that's what it's becoming um, I just wanted to get on here and say, um, we have no idea what people are going through. Um, I am the epitome of strong. I am always saying, it doesn't matter. I, you know, I just pray that God makes him who he wants him to be. And if he never talks, it's fine. And it is fine. Don't get me wrong. But it's heavy sometimes. And... Um, I don't show that side a lot because I don't want anyone to think that I don't believe in him or that I don't believe that talking's around the corner or I don't believe all these things. And so I carry it and it gets heavy. Most days are great. Most days are good. And so anyway, this is something that you would never know if I wasn't open about it because I had it. And so... That's kind of what I wanted to talk about is we don't know the battles people are facing. And so let's try to be kind and let's try to be um, sincere and genuine and good to each other. Um, because you have no idea what someone's carrying or you have no idea even sometimes what kind of day somebody's having. Because I know I try to be happy and cheery and I don't feel that way a lot of times. And so... Um, Anyway, this was not meant to be a wine session, and I have to go because I have somewhere I have to be. <laughs> but anyway, I just wanted to get on here and say that, and say that the struggle is real. The sadness is real. The um, hard days are real, and it's heavy. And just because I carry it well doesn't mean it's not heavy. And so, um, yeah. I just wanted to get on here and say that. Thanks for listening. Thanks for letting me vent. I know it was scattered and crazy and a horrendous angle because I got all these chins going on and I apologize. But anyway, guys, thanks for letting me vent. And I promise you I'm fine. Everything's fine. Um, it's just been one of those days. So anyway, thanks for watching. I'll catch y'all next time. Hopefully I'll be in a happier, lighter area.